Next. Oh, I assume you balancing men. You want a hard balancing problem? Somebody up front had one. Was it you? Yeah. Uh, was it the one I showed in class? Do you have it written down? Let's see. Oh, that's small. Let me, uh... I, uh, they, oh, she has one. Okay, you can ask for another one a little later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, she was too fat. She asked me for class. So, she was uh, prophetic or something and knew that somebody was going to ask about this. Okay, this is one I showed in class. And, uh, but I didn't balance because I didn't feel like it, I suppose. I don't know. We didn't have time, probably. We don't. So it was the Coca-Cola one. Ah, uh, here it is. Coca-Cola, do the do, or whatever. I don't know what the, what is there, Lotto? I totally forgot. Okay. Okay, here it was. All right, how I do these, that, they could be of different kinds of difficulty. This is of one particular style. Uh, I would look for the most complicated molecule, which is one of these two. And I'd also find what appears only once per side. So what atoms appear <laughs> once per side or elements. So for example, calcium does. Oh, by the way, you're going to have to use your eraser when we do this. You'll see why in a moment. So calcium appears once per side. There's three here and five there. So what if I put a three here and a five here? Okay. So that'd be f uh, 15 calciums per side. What else appears only once per side? What other element? Carbon uh, is one, two, that is true. However, I shouldn't pick it. Does anybody know why? Uh, because it, these two numbers, now that I decided of the three and five are fixed, I shouldn't start on another set of two that are not part of these two molecules. So I want something that appears on both sides that is in one of these two molecules. Phosphorus. Phosphorus is a good one. So there's, oh, how many here? Nine. Okay, cool. What else? Silicon. Uh, nope. Silicon appears twice per side. There's how many here? Ten. 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 Okay, what else? Fluorine appears twice per side. There's, how, there's three here, but four here. So I'd have to put three fourths. All right, get your eraser. I'm going to go to a different color. I want to change them all to whole numbers. So I'm going to multiply through by four right now for everything that has a number. If it does not have a number, I'm ignoring it. So I'm ignoring these two blank spots. Okay? All right. So this becomes, I'm multiplying by 4, that's a 12. This will be a 40. Oh, well then why did you say there was 10? Okay. How many silicons are there? Oh yeah, there was one here. We couldn't have done silicon in the first place. Good, I erased it. Okay. Yeah, whoever, uh, we forgot. There's one here, one here, and one there. So we couldn't have done silicon. Okay. So there's 12 there. This I'm multiplying by 4 looks like it's 36. So I'm multiplying by 4 looks like it'd be 20. And this will be 3. Okay. Now what element... Is there any other element that appears twice in one of the molecules that we've already set? <coughs> any more elements? I don't think so. I don't see one. Okay. So where should we go next then? What's an element we haven't done? Yeah, if you said oxygen, that's crazy because um, there's two here. There's too many oxygens. Usually oxygen is one of those elements I leave to the very end. Okay, what else? Carbon. Carbon I can't do because they're unspecified. I need a number here or here. Remember, I have to pick something that already has a number in front of it. <laughs> unless it's my first pick. Okay, what else? Silica. Silica, there we go. That's the one to pick. So, there on the right side are how many right now? Should be 43. 20 times 2 plus 3. 43, so I'm going to put a 43 here. Now, now I need to do what? 
Again, I cannot do carbon <laughs> because there's no number in front of it. I know you're really excited about carbon, I know that. <laughs> Can't do it yet. I have to do oxygen. Okay, so uh, on the left, how many oxygens are here? Yeah, 12 times 12, 144 plus 86, what is that number? Okay, so there's 144 plus 86, that's 230, right? So now, on this side right now, there is how many here? Yeah, 20 times 7, 140. So what's 230 minus 140? 90. So this is 90. Done. Oh, not that bad. That took about two minutes or so, two and a half minutes. Is this a question you would do first on the exam, middle or last? Last. Please, please, don't be ridiculous. Do it last, okay? <laughs> All right. Uh, any questions? All right, moving on. Yes? The equation was definitely given if it's of this level of difficulty, yes. Everything printed is given. Okay. Next. Uh, we did balancing, let's do a dilution. Doing decent on time, we might be able to finish here, we'll see. Uh, let's see, there's uh, different orders of difficulty. There's something that I can dilute and ask you the final volume, that would be about equivalent of mixing two different things that both have the same item in finding. So which would you prefer, mixing two different that have the same kind of species or something that's mixing it and finding the uh, added volume? <laughs> They're both kind of... No, I don't have time for both. I don't know which one's the first one. The mixing one or the added volume? Mixing? Okay. So the mixing one, an example would be, let's say you have um, sodium chloride and you're mixing it with, uh, let's see, bear, oh no, no, uh, uh, um, strontium chloride, that should work. Okay, and let's say this is one molar, let's say this is uh, 3 molar, let's say this is 20 milliliters, let's say this is 50 milliliters. We're mixing them and I want to know, after you mix them together, what is the Cl minus, uh, the molarity of the Cl minus. Okay, so we're putting them together and then I want to know the molarity of just the Cl minus. Okay, and we can kind of add to that, so just do a multiplier problem. Let's say I also want to know the molarity of NaCl at the end. Okay, so we'll do a two-parter, part A and part B. Okay, so I made it a little more difficult with two parts. Okay, the first part, uh, if you just care about something that exists in the beginning and you care about it at the end, then all you need to do is use the normal dilution formula. And 1v1 equals M2v2. What's the initial molarity? One molar. What's the initial volume? 20. Oh, sorry, I wasn't even thinking about sig figs here, so ignore sig figs. Or we can kind of think about it, we'll try. Okay, final volume, the final molarity, that's what we want to know. Final volume? Yeah, 20 plus 50 or 70 milliliters. Okay? All right, so the molar second molarity would be 20 divided by 70, whatever, two sevenths, whatever that number is. Okay? Uh, what would, is it okay that this is in, not in liters? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, that's fine because they exist on both sides, so they self-cancel. All right, uh, if you want to think about sig figs, how many sig figs should I have in the answer? It's kind of a ridiculous problem. The way I wrote it, though. One. 
One, yeah, because each of the volumes have one. Oh well. Okay. Uh, so, uh, next. What am I doing next? Oh yeah, part B. So that was A. B. Now I care about not sodium chloride or strontium chloride as a unit, but uh, the chloride itself. So when we have multiple things going on, I would, and we're adding two of them, I would say focus on moles and then focus on the volume separate. So you're gonna go, we're gonna remember that molarity is moles per liter. Find the moles, find the volume, and put it all together. So you're really not, uh, in a, as opposed to this one where you started with this. Okay, so what we're gonna do is start with the sodium chloride say, and you're going to go, okay, what's moles? So one molar times 20 uh, milliliters. What do I have to do? I, I'm missing something here. Yeah, here I must change it to liters because there's not one on each side that cancels itself out. So this turns out to be, let's see, oh, 20 divided by 1,000, 2 over 100, 1 over 50 moles, whatever that is, okay? Now you're going to do the same thing for the strontium chloride. Okay, so that had 3 molar. And it was 50 uh, milliliters. <laughs> and we're going to convert, so just like the same, just like above, but we're using the strontium numbers. And this will be... 150 divided by 100, 15 divided by 100, 3 divided by 20, I guess. Question. Yes. Isn't there two moles of chloride uh, for every one mole of Yeah, we haven't got there yet, but way to be on top of it. Now, we're going to do exactly what, oh, I don't know where the voice came from, but exactly what that voice said. <laughs> so, this is the moles of the strontium chloride. We don't care about the strontium chloride, we care about the chloride in and of itself. So I'm going to change colors. There's one chloride for every sodium chloride, so this is also equal to the molarity of the chloride. However, in this case, there's two chlorides in every strontium chloride. So I have to take this and go two moles of chloride for every one mole of the strontium chloride, because there's two of them, basically doubles the number. So we would have, I guess, three tenths uh, moles of chloride. Is that what you were thinking of, voice person? Okay, now they're silent. Okay, I hope it was, because they were right if it was. That is now, we've got moles coming from both, so I need to sum those two numbers up. So, uh, whatever it is, 1 50th plus 3 tenths moles. And now what am I going to do with this quantity? I'll, let me zoom out so you see the whole screen. Yeah, you look up here. I'm going to divide by the volume. I've got the total moles of chloride divided by the total volume, 20 plus 50 milliliters, and whatever that is. Okay, so you can do the math at home for fun. Uh, but that's the idea. When you're mixing two things and you want a particular ion, you got to find the moles of that. Oh, I wrote molarity there. I should have written mole. you got to find the mole of the ion from both sources and divide by the total volume. Okay, any questions before we move on? Way in the back. Uh, yeah, the green. Um, should the milliliters be turned into liters for 20 plus 50 milliliters? Oh, yeah, nice one. Thanks. Good eye. Uh, yes? Um, when you started step A, what were you solving for? Uh, part A? Yeah. Is that what you're asking about? Part A was the molarity of sodium chloride. No, oh, okay. You just wanted that. Okay. Part B was the molarity of just the chloride in the mixture. Oh, like both of them? And because both are a source, you have to count for both. Oh, okay. All right. Cool. <laughs> Next, let's see what else is next. Uh, we just did dilution. 
Uh, does somebody have a consecutive reaction problem? I could do it if you have one. I don't have got a phone here recording me. Hi. Oh, this is your family. Blessings to you. I hope you do well on the test. And you only have 22%. So, good luck. Okay, did anybody find a consecutive reaction or simultaneous reaction? Yes. Nice. Oh, it's from the test. This is exam one, winter 2000, 2014, page 15. Thanks. I can just turn in my own and I'll find it. Page 15 is the only thing I remembered of everything I just said. Oh wait, but I think you had an older reader. Was it winter 2014, Hat? Yeah. Okay, so it's actually page 27. For those who have the current reader. It's a multiple choice question, kind of like I did in class last time. Number three. Let's give this a try. Okay, here's the overall. I need to find out the beta and gamma. Remember, step one is to look at the overall and find one of these compounds that appear only once below. Which one would you pick? Carbon dioxide, I think, is what I hear. Appears once here and three times there. Too many, too many appearances. Iron, once here and once here. Yeah, that'll work. I'll do a purple circle. For that one? Okay. Wow, that kind of covered up the question, but I think it had one here. So, I need mean, beta must be one half because I need one in the products and there's two right now. So that means it's B. Do you want me to do the rest of the problem or? That's, if it was a test, that's all I would do. When I go back and check it, I'd do the full thing. If you want to see more, <laughs> that was really funny. Okay. Uh, iron oxide appears twice. I'll do a brown underline for that one. Uh, I need, it needs to be in the reactants, and I need one of them. So the gamma has to be minus to flip it and one third because I need one of them. So one third would make it one, and that, that matches also, uh, better, <laughs> okay? And then for the last one, I've exhausted everything in the reaction, so for the last step, if, if I was doing it and there was no multiple choice, now I have to find an intermediate that again, there's only appears total of twice. What's a good intermediate to pick here? Let's see, I'm getting a new color here too. I will do green. Did you see Fe304? Yeah, that works. I'll do a green box for it. I think it appears only twice. That's an intermediate. You know it's intermediate because it doesn't appear in the overall. This is minus one third. So I needed to cancel with the one on this side, so I need to multiply by. Yeah, minus, because that's minus, and then because it's two here, if I multiply by one-sixth, one-sixth times two would be one-third. So you have minus one-third on both sides and it would cancel. So thus you have the final number there in the answer. Yeah. Why would carbon dioxide not move to the other side? It does. We have flips, the whole reaction flips. But this, what I'm saying is, the sum of all the carbon dioxides will equal one, if you check it, and the sum of all the carbon monoxides will also equal one. So you can double, that would be something maybe when you're doing the whole problem at the end of double check, you'd see if it all works out. But ever, the stars are aligning, all three numbers worked, I'm pretty sure it's right. Yeah. Okay, next. Okay, uh, what do we have next? Stoichiometry with molarity problem. Stoichiometry with molarity. Oh, let's think of a problem here. Uh, HCl plus uh, strontium. Oh, what is the name of this? Strontium hydroxide. What kind of reaction is this? 
Yeah, you could have two answers here. You could call it double replacement, which is the generic name, uh, because this is a what kind of molecule? Acid, and this is a what kind of molecule? Base. Base. You could also call this a neutralization reaction. Okay. Uh, so, let's say I had one molar of that, two molar of that. Let's say I had 100 milliliters of this and uh, 200 milliliters of that one. And no. 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 Let's say I wanted to know the volume of this one. Okay. So, you know it. This would be a stoichiometry problem. You're going to go to moles, molar ratio, and then go to the requested unit. Uh, it's specifically in the stoichiometry titration category, or the third category of a molarity problem, because you're only dealing with reactants. That's kind of the signal that it's one of those. So, but you still do normal stoichiometry. No new concept whatsoever. So you're going to say, let's change the, what we have to moles. One molar is moles per liter. I'm going to get rid of the volume by multiplying by 100 milliliters, but while I'm doing that, I realize, hey, my units don't match. So I'm going to say, well, 1,000 milliliters for every liter. Okay, so now I have moles, and this is moles of the HCl. I don't want moles of the HCl. I want moles of the strontium hydroxide, so I'm going to do a molar <laughs> ratio. But, but, it's not balanced. Two... Two. I think that does it. Is it balanced now? Yeah. That should work. So there are uh, there is one mole of the strontium hydroxide for every two moles of the HCl. So in my those of you in other classes, I have three steps for each stoichiometry problem. Step one is go to moles. Step two, molar ratio. And then step three, convert to the requested unit. So the requested unit is volume. Uh, so what I'm going to do now, times, I don't have space. So I'm going to the next line. Uh, what am I going to multiply by here to go to volume? Yeah, the molarity, the inverted molarity. So moles per liter. I was given this. And then it depends if you want to report your answer in molarity or if you want to, or in liters or milliliters. Let's just do liters because it wasn't specified because I just made it up. Okay. So, done. Whatever that calculates out to be, uh, it'd be uh, one tenth, one twentieth, one fortieth. So, and the units would be liters. Okay. Uh, Cool. Any questions on that? So this is kind of a stoichiometry and a molarity problem in one. All right. Next, we're almost there. Limiting reactant. Oh. Somebody have a limiting reactant problem they'd like me to do as a nice example? You're on low battery, man. Okay. I'll push low battery mode. I don't know if that was okay. Okay. Too bad. I'm the one standing here, I guess. Okay. Uh, limiting reactant. Somebody have a limiting reactant problem that we can do? Yes. Yeah, you have one up there? Is it, uh, what exam is it? Winter 2016, you said? Okay, let's take a look and see if that's a good one. Winter 2016. What number? 14, no, that is an, that's a kind of a conversion problem. We can do that after if you're into it, but we need a limiting reactant problem. You have one? Winter 17, number 19. Yeah, this is one. This will work. You don't have my exams. That's it, right there. All right. Uh, let's do a couple parts of this. We'll at least set it up. You can work on it from there. You can do some of the math. Okay, so let's write the reaction 2N2H4 plus N2O4 goes to 3. So it's already balanced, it looks like. 
Uh, let's write down what we know underneath. 100 grams, 200 grams. <coughs> Blue units. Got something over there. Okay. What mass of N2 would theoretically be produced? Okay, you know this is a limiting reactant problem when information about more than one reactant is given. So that's the case here. So we have two routes, two stoichiometry routes here to get to mass. It's over-specified mathematically. So let's try and solve this. Uh, we're going to start with N2H4 here. 100 grams. Then you're going to look up the molar mass from the periodic table. That'd be 28 plus 4, around 32. 0 0.24. Oh, 0.2. How about that? Okay, 32.02. <laughs> and then you're going to say that there's 3 moles of N2 for every 2 moles of N2H4. And the final step to find the mass is uh, 28.02 grams per mole of N2. So this will get you the mass of nitrogen. Since you knew the other number, do you know this number? No? Oh, that was just random. Okay. Next. Oh, you have it? 131.1. Okay, next. Thank you. Uh, N204, you're going to do the exact same thing but with its respective numbers. 200 grams. Oh, that's 64 plus 28, which is 88 plus 4, 92, about 92 grams per mole, something like that. You can find it yourself. Uh, three moles of N2 for every one mole of N204. And then the molar mass is the same for N2, 28.02 grams per mole. And that person who knew the first number, 183.0 grams of N2. Okay, the correct answer, top or bottom? Top, the smaller number, it's smaller because the reactant that's limiting, there wasn't enough to produce more than that. And so that would be the correct answer, N2H4 or what would you name this? Dinitrogen tetrahydride. This would be dinitrogen tetraoxide or tetraoxide. Okay. So uh, that's the answer for part B. Uh, let's just do part B for fun because it's also part of limiting reactants. Part B, and then we'll have to end right here. Uh, what mass of the reactant excess is there? So you take the answer, 131.1 grams of N2. You go backwards and you say, change that back to moles, 28.02 grams per mole. And then go back to the reactant in excess, one mole of N204 for every three moles of N2. I apologize. <laughs> And then the molar mass of the N204. Uh, and that would get mass. And the basic you're going to use, say, the mass total, or the given, really this is the given, is equal to the mass. Why did she not tell that my face was different? <laughs> By the way, she's really concerned about the three way after quiz. She said she didn't do well in the first one, so can you help her out after <laughs> Mass. Uh, used plus mass remaining. So this number would go right there. This is what you're looking for. All right, let's pause right there. Uh, we're gonna, I'm going to release people who want to go. For people who want to stay and ask specific questions, stay in your seats. And when it quiets down, I'm just going to take you by show of hands. Okay? All right. Take care. I hope this was helpful for people.